Good evening, friends. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We've got a very special guest tonight. Uh, we have Adam with Marfugal News. And we've been trying to connect together for a long time. And I've had a lot of you sending me information about Adam. And I've heard nothing but good reports uh, from you guys about Adam. And so I'm excited to be able to have Adam on. Talk a little bit about this asteroid things that are going on. Uh, et cetera. And Adam, I know how it is when people watch a video, sometimes they might only go five minutes into it. So first, let's first if you can share it with people, how they can contact you, what you're doing. And then let's talk about this asteroid uh, information that you're, that you're hearing from sources that you have as well. Uh, thanks. Yeah. So uh, I'm Adam A.K. Marf. If you guys haven't seen me, I'm from Marfugal News. I have a, another channel, uh, Marfugal TV, where I mostly do live shows. We actually have uh, anywhere from a two-hour to three-hour show, four nights a week, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. And then we have our website, marfugalnews.com. So if you want to find any of the stuff that I talk about, uh, we actually back up pretty much everything we say with a bibliography on that website. So if we go over news, we actually archive it per night. So uh, say, you know, last night we actually had a full show, nine articles. Those are all stored there uh, on and under each and every video. Um, but to just sum up, because I know what you're saying is, is absolutely true about people tuning out. Uh, basically, I've, I've, I've known about you for a long time. You're a YouTube le legend. I've been around for about three years, going on three years on YouTube. And as you probably know, we are in kind of a group of people that have shared our truth. You know, some people call us a truther. Some call us a conspiracy theorist. Some call us, uh, you know, crazy. It doesn't matter what they call us. But we, over the last three years, have gathered a lot of military resources. In fact, we gathered so much military in the last three years, Discord just took our our group of 15,000 people away purely because of a group of about 400 um, a, um, active and retired military uh, folks that was in our Discord. What we have created there, or what we did create, and now we have to recreate, is state groups. So we have been helping every single state and multiple countries prepare for natural disasters or whatever may come next. In the time being where I started on Cascadia Subduction Zone, I have found out a ton of information. And I talked to you, you know, we've talked about this um, a few times now. You know, obviously you get people that send you information, information that's basically somebody else's YouTube video of them and their theories. The stuff that we're getting is not theories. It's actual documents or it's actual people that are basically you know, in the know, and they are seeing what is going on right now. So what we, uh, why we kind of reached out to you was because of your video that said, prepare for impact. When you said that, uh, you basically said a lot of the same things I have said, not only last year, but two years ago, if you go back through my videos, uh, what I was told was that uh, basically by around this six month time period, that the world would be unrecognizable. Uh, there was a 482 days, even if you just type in Marfugal 482 days, uh, that, that was a video I did, you know, obviously 500, 600 days ago, or I, I don't even know how long. That lined up with the beginning of CV-19. Uh, and now here we are, it's unrecognizable. The, the same source told me that we would have earthquakes, we would have asteroids, and we would have extreme weather triple all in a very short time period. And now fast forward two and a half years, we're basically there and it's only getting worse. On top of that, about, uh, I would say four or five months ago, six months ago, we had a, a, a person, I shouldn't say what, but they are, we're trying to keep her anonymous, which I have actually shared with you uh, their information and you're gonna get a, a chance to talk to them as well. And they are a financial auditor. They actually audit uh, government 
transactions. So DHS, FEMA, these kind of things, and they look over these things and sign off on them. What has crossed their desk is essentially a cleanup, a ton of money, and this is for this year's budget, for cleanup for debris from a class two gas giant. Now this is what this person is saying in a class two gas giant is in space. When you said that your source was saying that we are going through a debris field, that was basically like exactly what we heard, only in different words. So it was really freaky that, um, that you said that. Now, I'm sorry, there's a train up above. It's, it's not interfering with your sound, though. It's actually, your sound's pretty good. I thought it was kind of cool to watch the train. What's even cooler is the conductor waved at me. That was actually... That was actually pretty cool. Either way, basically, I've been talking. To, I've been talking to you. I've been talking to others, and everything is starting to line up right now. Uh, the creation of Space Force, uh, the observatory sh uh, observatory shutdowns. Uh, now, currently, you've got all of the military leaders that aren't necessary. That you know aren't doing public. You know statements are all in Mount Cheyenne. And this is public. They know that they're in Mount Cheyenne, you know, no rad. Uh, they've picked certain continuity of government. They've actually picked those, uh, those government workers and put them in Mount Cheyenne as well. And then you've got uh, Sunspot Observatory actually shutting down. Um, six more. This was, you know, prior. And I almost think that that is when they discovered all of this. Uh, you've got China and U.S. doing all these back and forth kind of tit for tats. You've got the Middle East firing off, which you know a lot more about than I do. And you have all of the events with all of the other countries trying to go to space, trying to go to different, um, all, almost every country is trying to get to the moon, trying to get places, uh, trying, you know, trying to get somewhere in this space race. I think it's personally because there is something way, way big coming. I don't know if you agree with that, Steve. Well, I've heard some of those things as well, though, and uh, that there, the technology that we have and things of that nature there and some of the levitation craft that they have, that some of the elite are planning on <clears throat> literally going out away from the Earth when the bad parts of this uh, system come through. And... Uh, uh, I would like to, to to go back just for a moment when you talked about the uh, the the source that you have uh, that's the auditor and talking about the cleanup of this. Uh, I forget how you how you kind of spoke about that, uh, but can you kind of elaborate a little bit more about that so that so that the listeners would understand better about what you mean by this cleanup uh, that she was seeing and what type of event would cause that so the so here was the only discrepancy when you you spoke and when she spoke was that you said we might be going through an asteroid belt i think that you only said that on one video and i think you later kind of said you know i'm not an expert on this um but it wouldn't necessarily be us going through an asteroid belt people get weird about technicals it would be some stuff coming towards us, so a lot of asteroids. So not technically an asteroid belt, but you know, us is not, we're not scientific, basically a lot of stuff coming towards us. What she was saying, or what they were saying is that basically this stuff came across the desk and it was for serious debris cleanup. And we're not talking about debris like some stuff on the side of the road. We're talking about, we're talking about debris as in like cities crumbling. Uh, you're talking about the amount of money spent is cleaning up half of the planet. Uh, it's, it's more money than any of us will ever imagine to have. Even some of the elites will not have this much money. So again, they're cleaning up destroyed cities. That, that's what we're getting from it. And that is debris from space debris. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's literally something from space affecting us here on the planet. People don't have to believe. Here's the one thing that we don't have is the time frame. 
So I am not sending this out there to say, hey, there's a date that you guys need to worry. I think that all of us on earth should just, you know, accept that we all have a limited time frame. And I think we really need to start accepting that whether you get hit by a car, or whether, uh, you know, you get cancer 10 years down the road, whatever it is, we all have to accept that we're human and we might die. When you start to accept that, you stop getting afraid of all of these different things. Yes. So the, the reason why people call channels like mine fear porn is because they're afraid. They're, they're really afraid of these kind of things, but yet they're addicted to it. So they keep watching. We're not there to scare people. We're there to um, almost get it into people's heads. So it, it's more like exercise, right? Just like in Japan, when they drill for an earthquake, they drill their kids from a very early age and they get them ready for it beforehand. So when the actual event happens, you don't panic and you're actually ready to go do something about it. You don't sit there and freeze because you've never thought this about this at all. We need to think about all the possibilities. Even if it doesn't come in, we have 10 years, uh, 20 years down the road, uh, you know, that maybe, maybe the asteroid comes in 2050. We would still need to have something prepared for this. The yeah. government is planning all of this stuff. We see it right in front of our eyes. They're doing public simulations of, of evacuating all of New York. But everybody's like, oh, it's just a continuity thing. You know, they're, they're just making a contingency plan of everything. I mean, uh, let me, we, let me we see it. Here. Let me say this, Adam. Uh, today, and, and I wanted to actually take with my own listeners, so I think it's great that I have you on as well, and that you're putting these things <laughs> in perspective the way you are. Because I realized, too, with because we created on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, we created a, a forum for people to interact with to say, okay, we, we live out in the country. If you're in trouble, you want to get away from a coastal area, you can come, you can go there. But then as I begin to look at the correspondence, our correspondence between the people, I begin to realize, like you said, there is a lot of fear. And... Our initial reason for leaving Florida was not because of asteroids, because even if they're coming, it doesn't matter where you go, you can get hit anywhere. We didn't want to get locked down in Florida because of the coronavirus and with the possibility of them force, trying to force vaccinate or something like that, or trying to take your kids away from you. That was our initial reason for leaving. Now, with that being said, I was getting different information. As you mentioned earlier, the asteroid belt, as I called it, uh, Glenn, my, my Washington source, said in his email to me, which we talked by phone on secure lines, and literally from the Pentagon. I actually have his, I get his calls from the Pentagon on secure lines. He said, Steve, you call it an asteroid belt, but that's not what it really is. So there, there you, like you said, and I, I've shared that with people before. He just said to me that September, everybody on the planet would know that we're in big trouble. But he never elaborated. And then my FEMA source and also another friend of mine that, that's a contractor for the Pentagon, both said they corroborated the information about September separately. And they said that September, we would see one of the first strikes of, a, of an asteroid, and then it would slowly but surely continue to happen as the months went on. Today, though, and I'd like to get your thoughts on this as I, as I conclude this part here, I felt pressed in my heart to go to my email on Israeli News Live and just type in asteroid. No voice spoke to me or nothing. I just felt it in my heart. I needed to do that. I felt like there's somebody who's written me that I, that I need to go see who it is. And I don't do that very often. It's very unusual for me to do that. So I did. And sure enough, about the fourth email down under Asteroid, a man named Robert, I won't call his last name as of yet, but he is going to come on our program Tuesday night. He had wrote me to call him. He said, I've got a serious information I want to share with you. And so I did. And I don't normally do that because you never know who's contacting you. And you, are, you know how that is, Adam. I mean, you've, grown, you've made a, an incredible organization in a, in a short amount of time. But Robert said to me, he's, uh, I believe he's retired Navy. I think he's a cryptologist, if I remember right. He speaks Spanish as well. He traveled to Chile 
and was given the access to go through the documents and records of the uh, Chilean astronomer uh, Munoz, uh, uh, Munoz Ferrada. And he said, you're very close to accurate, but just a little bit off as far as Mr. Ferrada's notes. He said, I was, ha I could sp he said, I speak Spanish, so I took all the notes. He said, I've compiled them. They were very generous. I spent three days working on this. He said, in Ferrada's notes, he said, again, as you call it, asteroid belts, not what he calls it, but he said that the, you'll start seeing them coming in more and more frequently in the end of 2020. He didn't say what month, just the end of 2020. He said in about every 13 or so asteroids that come by, one is going to hit the Earth. He said, but they won't be planet killers, but they'll be significant in size. They'll cause a lot of damage. And he said that will go on. And in his point, he said it can go on up to about five or even seven years. He said, Mr. Ferratus put in his notes, he could never pinpoint the calculation of the coming of this quote unquote Nibiru, but we, he called it herbuculus because he said it constantly changes speed, slows up, speeds up, slows down, et cetera. But he said when it comes through, he said then, he said the poles will shift. He said continents will rip apart. He said that's exactly what he wrote in his document. They will rip apart. He said that will be when the devastation really comes. And so I mentioned to him that my FEMA source said that there would be like rain of little asteroids, little small ones coming down, which was similar to what I was told with my uh, source that works with, with the Pentagon. And he said, he also wrote about that as well. He said, but they will not be devastating, but they will cause a lot of damage. With that in mind there, of course, one, it's good for people to know, it's not like you gotta be afraid that you're gonna be you know, knocked out by billions of asteroids just coming down by the end of the year, but it'll be a gradual thing that happens over time. Adam, what's your thoughts? Well, so first off, anybody can go and Google this right now. Uh, they just found evidence that from underneath Africa, it is literally tearing apart. The, the continent, the plates are ripping from underneath it. This is just brand new, like in the last week. So everything that, you know, it, it's almost like, I'm sure you've been following a lot of different things and a lot of different people for a long time. And when all of this stuff starts coming together, you, you almost don't want to believe it. Like, I don't want to believe that this is true. I want somewhere in the back of my mind, I want this to be just some fairy tale, but it, it is now turning out that the fictional crazy conspiracy theories are now uh, more becoming true than they are, you know, false. What they, what they were doing. And I I've said this on my show a lot is that to, how, how would you hide a, a, a needle? Well, in a, uh, in a haystack, it's much easier to find. But if you hide a needle in a pile of needles, it's much harder to find. So they've actually released part of these truths. I've seen even back, you know, five, six years ago on, on history and, and all these channels putting out documentaries, these, these what ifs, and they've put these scenarios that are now happening right now, and they put it as a what if. And we have all the beginning stages of it. As far as uh, what your gentleman said, as far as like the asteroid belt, this and that, I mean, literally, I, I think I said it too, like that as asteroid, and somebody corrected me on the technicality of it or something. You know, I'm not, I, I didn't go to school for uh, that kind of stuff. Right. Again, me and you, are, we're just passing on the information that we are getting. And I got kickback. I won't say, you know, from who, but I had, I had quite a few people that pushed back on me because I said this. And I, I believe, and these were good, these are people I respected, people I look up to. They pushed, uh, pushed back on it and they said, no, 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 I, I follow this stuff. I, I know all the information. I, I look at the stuff every day. I look at the radars. I, I look at this and I'm saying to myself, this stuff is not going to come through the radars. Just as, as I think, you know, earthquakes are not reported on, on certain, you know, places. As far as radars, how do we keep having these surprise comments? Atlas, mind you, was half the size of the sun, or they said it was going to be half the size of the sun, 
and then the tail was going to be half the size of the sun. So that's about as large as our sun. And they described it as having a comb, or uh, I'm sorry, an atmosphere, when usually you talk about an asteroid with a coma. An atmosphere is like a planet. So it almost is like they're, they're saying that Atlas was some sort of planet-sized thing, and it was coming. One day, it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter, getting thousands of times brighter. Nobody can explain it. And then the next, all of a sudden, they're telling us, oh, it broke apart. It was going to come in in July, mid-July, and we were going to see this naked comet surprise. It was going to be amazing. Atlas. I'm still talking about Atlas. Right, right. Then all of a sudden, Neowise pops up and is a surprise Neowise. Then Neowise is a naked see-with-your-eye comet and they're saying it's not the same as Atlas. This is a completely different one. So what are the odds that in the same month we were about to have two naked eye comets like this out of nowhere? And they only discovered them a couple months ago. Almost all of the big NEO dangerous ones, they've just recently discovered. And if we're having so many more of these things, why would they shut down all of the world's observatories when, you know, they, they say, by the way, their comment goes, well, don't worry, just because we shut them down doesn't, don't worry, the, the government ones are still working. So we've still got the most important ones working and, you know, they're monitoring the situation. When all of the other ones, the, the regular Joes, they're all closed down for CV-19 when a lot of them are run by one person at a time. Like an actual one person can run one of these things by themselves. There's no reason to social distance. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Do you see what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and the thing is, is what you're saying was confirmed to me by uh, the contractor friend that I have that, uh, that does a massive contract with the Pentagon. And he's been following this for, I don't know, about 12 years and uh, knowing all about this system coming. And he was told as well, they, they shut these down because they didn't want the public knowing. Now, his own words to me, we had a private conversation recently, and his own words to me was that roughly either, and he said it like this, now Glenn, my Washington source says, by September, everyone will know. He said, well, it's either August or September. And he said, and if it's not being able to be seen by August or September, then it would be in the spring of the year. And so sometimes when I say things like that, people say, oh, Steve, you're starting to change your mind on what, what time frame. No, all I can do is share what's being told to me. I, I, I'm like everybody else. Or like the same with you, Adam. I, I didn't study this stuff. I'm not an astronomer. I mean, there's, there's great people out there that study things like this. You know, we got Jesse with BP Earthwatch. He does a marvelous job at what he does, you know, but... Kind of like what you're saying too, though. Do people always have the access to all that information? Another good friend of mine, Gary Lowry, another amateur astronomer that really loves to follow these type things. But he too, now he's even said to me, some things we don't see. We're just amateurs, you know? So could something be coming in that they're not aware of? Like you said, it's coming at us. So I, I just don't know. But uh, as far as with your own source that you have with uh, the, this, the auditor, has she given you any more clues, uh, Adam, that, that, that we can kind of glean from? Okay, so here's the thing. There's no time frame, but it's part of this year's budget. So why would it be a part of the, Or is it going to be a part of the budget for the next 10 years? That's one thing. That's one thing I thought of is how would they, if they wanted to spend a just an absolute ton of money especially with right now, how would they hide that? Well, it's kind of funny because we've got the whole, uh, you know, I guess the trillions of dollars being given out for the stimulus. So that would be one way to hide it, I guess. Um, and again, they could, you know, write off 20 trillion to some cause and then say it went towards senators or Congress or something else. I don't know. But again, if they wanted to do that, then I don't know... Uh, as far as that would be the only reason why they would put it in this year's budget. So that is, that is it makes why we think it's going to be soon. Not to mention uh, with her, uh, you're going to have to 
pick her brain as well. And again, you know, we've given the, the info to you and I think that you'll have enough time to ask as many questions as you want. I offered another person privately, you know, this person wants to stay anonymous, but again, uh, I think that there's a, a few of us, you know, but at the same time they wanted the information out. So if, you know, we all spread it, they said that there's enough people that know about this. This is the scary part. There's enough people in the government that know about this, that we're not crazy. You know, there's enough people that know that they can't really do anything about us, you know, doing this. And, you know, the thing is, Adam, and, and I don't want to hold you too long because I know your family's waiting for you. So we'll kind of cut this a little bit short for today. But uh, the thing is, when I talk with Glenn, Glenn said to me one day, he said, Steve, he said, look, we were doing a phone conversation. And he said, he said, a lot of things I go based on probability. He said, because I'm watching what's happening internally. He said, like, for example, your old office, which he's talking about the CIA headquarters, is being moved. He said, we are moving assets from Washington. Most of them are going out to, uh, uh, oh, gosh, what is it, to Colorado Springs, Colorado. And that's where the majority of all the assets are being moved to. And oddly enough, my FEMA source, who's an engineer for FEMA, said that the reason why they're moving everything out to Colorado is because we're going to be ripped apart here in the United States. Washington, D.C. is going to be totally decimated. And so therefore, Colorado Springs will be the new capital of the United States. So you realize that there's stuff that backs up what you're saying. Do you see the secret drills above Washington, D.C., where they're swooping in with helicopters and picking up as many people as possible? We know this for a fact. Anybody can look this up. We've documented it. Uh, it accidentally leaked out because uh, people asked what the budget was for. Where, where are these millions of dollars going for helicopter fuel? And they ended up busting that out. And that came out about five months ago. So Washington, D.C. is doing all these crazy drills, uh, picking people up. Look at a, about a year and a half ago when California had the drills where they were picking people up off of the top of skyscrapers, Arizona, uh, you know, there was New York, there was Chicago, there was Texas, there was Jade Helm five years ago where they had actors say, you can't take my gun, you can't take my gun, I'm an American citizen. They were literally paid actors and they've got video of this. This was all, that wasn't conspiracy theory. That was documented proof. That was literally there right in front of us. Now with what's going on, China is burning uh, all of the papers at their consulate uh, two days ago. And now they are kicking us out of their consulate. Something is going on with them as well. And guess what they were trying to get into? They were researching and trying to get into the CV-19 stuff. Same with Russia. Russia was, was just recently caught trying to hack in and find out what is in the, the you know, V scene. So all of, this is, all of this stuff is connected. And whether it's coming now or later or whatever it is, this might be the chance for them to take over. Or, or let me rephrase that. Yeah. When all of this goes down, when stuff hits Earth, maybe they have this scheduled down to a T, which places it will hit. Maybe countries are planning... Uh, the kind of after effects, what they'll do during this. You know what I mean? If, if the America is at, at its weakest, boom, take it out there. Why, why do we have all of our Navy down lo looking for cartel members in the middle of a pandemic? There, there's so many weird things here. It doesn't make sense at all. And people are starting to understand that. People can hate me. They can say whatever crap they want to say about my channel. They can say whatever they want about uh, my motives. But again, you guys can all look up the, the damn stuff and look up for yourself. There's enough weird going on to make anybody start scratching their head. This, everything with this, we're, now we're all at home. We're all, you know, and it's coming back. Some could say it's for the election, but think about it. We're, they're literally starting all the lockdowns over again. We're going to be locked down within two weeks. Our almost FEMA, guaranteed. Our FEMA source said that the reason for the lockdown that's coming is because they know that the disasters are coming. But she also said at the same time, there would be used, they will be using tactical nukes on our nation while some of these asteroids are hitting in order to cover up what's going on there. My uncle who is also retired law enforcement, worked with the FBI. Uh, he said, and it was confirmed as well what he told me, 
uh, recently, as well from my FEMA source, that the disaster in America will be so massive compared to the rest of the world that the Chinese are already waiting and ready. They will come in, they will come under the guise that they're bringing humanitarian aid, but they're only going to come after the pilfering and, and, and the violence between the citizens that are left have spent all their bullets as much as possible. They will come in as if they're offering humanitarian aid only to take over the nation for its natural resources. When that will well, be, I don't know. Well, and one thing that I pointed out last night on my show is that look at the, the researcher that they just grabbed from the San Francisco place or whatever, uh, from the concert. The, the researcher they were looking for, the reason why they were looking for them was because they were guilty of fraud, trying to fake and get a visa to work for a government program. It's kind of like people forget that we have thousands and thousands of spies. In fact, they know more of the real numbers with the with um, kind of the uh, Iran spies. They said one in every hundred people is is basically a sleeper cell. But with China, there are tons inside of our government. Same with Russia. They yeah. and I'm sure we have our guys over there in their government. But the fact is. We've got sleeper cells in our country, and it's not some James Bond movie. This is real life. And at any moment, any one of them could turn over. It, it, I, I always say, like the movie Red Dawn, uh, either the original or the remake. In the remake, they, they show them all coming down in Wallingford in Seattle uh, by you know paratrooping. And one of the scenes, the guy tries to go pick up his girlfriend. They're driving through fire and, and brimstone and, and people shooting. And it's the mayor of the town and the mayor of the town comes out and he's working with the invaders. That's the scenario that would actually happen if it, if it was, they would be working with half of our government. And I'm pretty sure people know which half. Absolutely. Adam, thank you so much for coming on with us. Can you share again? We'll put it in the description below for you guys that are listening. Uh, but Adam, if you would share with people how they can uh, watch your channel, those that may not already know about you, and, uh, and how they can contact you to support the work you're doing. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, pretty easy. Uh, I'm the founder of marfuglenews.com. Uh, you can you know, reach us at Marfugal News on YouTube. That's where we do our short edited videos. And then Marfugal TV is where we do our live show, uh, where we just recently broke a record of uh, almost 15,000 watching live, which was pretty awesome. So again, uh, that's Marfugal TV is where the live show is if you want to join with live news. And then Marfugal News is the uh, shorter edited videos. Uh, that is the bigger channel. So anyways, I, I just want to thank you. And, and again, I know that there's a lot of kind of pushback on saying anything like this. I don't do it for a reason. I, I don't do it unless it's something I really, truly believe in. And I've told you that. Like, this is something that I believe. I believe 100% is true in my heart. I do too. But I don't, but I don't know the time frame. That's the, exactly. that's the crappy part. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for listening in this evening. I'm Stephen Benoit with Adam on. Uh,